My name is Caleb Fletcher. I'm 16 years old. This took place around eight to nine months ago on the 24th of August, which was a Saturday. School had been going on for about two weeks. So to de-stress a little, I decided to see if my friends, Griffin and Broly, wanted to hop on Fortnite. My mom and sister were out shopping, my dad was working, and I was bored. It was around 8 p.m. when we finally got on to play because I decided to make pizza rolls beforehand and ended up burning the batch. After a few rounds, I could tell my friends were getting tired of losing, so they got off after only an hour. I planned on just lying down with my phone and going to bed. That was until I heard my two dogs barking outside. It's not unusual for them to bark given how people typically walk on the side of the road, but I still looked anyway, just to make sure. I didn't see anybody. But seconds after looking out the window, I heard our garage door open and shut. That usually means my dad is home from work, but I didn't see his van outside and he had texted me earlier telling me that he would be working late tonight. I decided to walk downstairs into the dining room and look out the window to get a better view. From there, I could see that our driveway was empty. There wasn't a person or vehicle in sight. I wasn't the type to go investigate. So I ran back up to my bedroom and texted my family group chat to ask if anybody was home. I told my mom about the garage door and she told me to turn off the lights, lock my bedroom door, and stay there until she got home. So I did just that. About 15 minutes later, I thought I heard our wooden floor downstairs creaking like someone was trying to be sneaky. I didn't have anything to use as a weapon, so I unclipped my microphone's boom arm from my desk and quietly opened the door. I walked out onto our upstairs balcony and looked over it trying to see if I could spot anyone hiding or anything suspicious. I stupidly yelled, is anybody there? Like they were really going to answer. I thought everything was fine, though, until I saw a large silhouette of someone standing underneath the balcony. I panicked and ran to the closest room with the door, which happened to be my small bathroom. The intruder must have known I noticed them because I heard loud and fast footsteps running up our stairs as I locked myself in the bathroom. I had stupidly left my phone in the bedroom, which was the room right next to me. After I built up enough courage, I bolted into my bedroom, locking the door as soon as I got in. My sister's room was right across from mine, and its door was open, so I figured the intruder must have been in there. After locking my bedroom door, I grabbed my phone and typed 911 into it, just before I called. I noticed that the storage room in my wall was open just a tad. I saw a dark brown eye peeking through the crevice, staring into my soul. The pure terror I felt in that moment is something I'll never forget. I booked it down the stairs and out my front door, running up the hill to my neighbor's house. He was a police officer. He alerted the other cops while I stayed with his wife, and he went down to investigate. I told them exactly where the intruder was hiding in my bedroom. Minutes later, I ran back down the hill to see if the intruder had been caught. When I walked in, I saw a tall, skinny man with a gray beard and a dirty black coat being pushed onto the floor by my neighbor as he was getting handcuffed. I'm not allowed to be home alone anymore and we have better security around our house now. My family was just happy to know I wasn't hurt, and they were thankful for my neighbor's bravery. I don't wish an experience like this on anybody, not even my worst enemy. This was a few months ago, while I was driving for DoorDash. I only drive as a sidekick, maybe 10 to 15 hours a week. This night, I was only doing a couple of orders since it was already late, and I had picked up a small order around 1 a.m. It was to be delivered to a business building somewhere across town, which was apparent by the address. This was a normal thing, usually for overnight workers or whatever. When I pulled into the parking lot though, it was empty. No cars at all. And it didn't look like there was a parking lot behind the building either. I parked in a spot near the front and got out with the food. The place was definitely an office building of some kind, and it was smaller than most, being only two stories and not very wide. All the lights were off in the windows, though, 
Aside from one light behind the front door, I walked up to the door and checked the app, seeing it had specific drop-off instructions to enter the main hallway and leave the bag outside room 232. I looked through the door into the building, seeing this hallway with a bunch of closed doors on either side. Delivering to specific rooms was something I had only done at hotels, so this was kind of new for me. I tested the door, pushing on it, and it was unlocked, so I stepped inside. I expected to hear people working, moving around, or talking, but instead, I didn't hear anything. There wasn't a single sound in the whole building. It was just white noise from the overhead lights buzzing above me. As I passed the first few doors, they were all numbered in the 100s, like 102 and 106. The room the instructions said to leave it at was in the 200s, so I assumed that meant it was on the second floor. In the middle of the hallway was the doorway leading to the staircase. It was held open with a wedge door stopper on the floor, but the lights weren't on. I stepped in and up to the bottom of the staircase, then looked up. The whole stairwell was pitch black. Not even any light was coming from above where the room was supposed to be for me to drop it off. Again, I started to notice the eerie silence, and it sent a chill through me. I was always one to do whatever the instructions say so. I'd get good reviews. But this was the first time I told myself that this was too sketchy. I stepped out of the stairwell and back into the hallway. And just as I did, the door right across from me opened. The lights in that room were off, but a man emerged from behind the door and stepped into the hallway. He was wearing street clothes and just didn't look like an office worker at all. But he stood in front of me and pointed past me at the stairwell. I nodded but didn't move, and neither did he. He just looked me in the eyes with a look like he was suppressing his anger. After an intense few seconds, I dropped the bag on the ground and started quickly walking to the exit. The man didn't follow me, but I heard his footsteps go into the stairwell and up the stairs as I left the building. I got in my car and left. I didn't know what that was, or if I was maybe overreacting about it, so I didn't call the police. The following day though, the police actually called me. Apparently, the office reported a break-in and in the CCTV footage, they saw my car and license plate, tracking it back to me. They also had footage of the break-in, and so they called me in to question me about any information I might have. I didn't have much to give, but it turned out there were actually three people that broke inside. One was downstairs, who I saw, but the other two were shown on the cameras to be hiding at the top of the stairs, seemingly waiting for me to go up. Disturbingly, Several other delivery orders were made to that same office that night. All of the other drivers were smarter than I was though, leaving the orders outside by the front door. What would have taken place in that office had any of us gone up to the second floor is unknown. But hopefully, the police can find the three men before anyone falls victim to it.